Hi, I'm Jake Burkett from Grey Alien Games, and I'm going to show you a hobby project that I've been working on in Pico 8 uh, over the last few years, actually. So let's load it up here. Uh, it's called Cyber Jam, and it's actually um, influenced by the old classic 8 bit game. Uh, Cybernoid, which was out on things like the Spectrum and the Commodore 64. It also had an Amiga version, probably an Atari ST version with fancy graphics. But as Pico 8 is a fantasy sort of 8-bit console um, with old school graphics, that's kind of more what I'm going for, uh, you know, the Spectrum and Commodore 64 versions uh, in, in this sort of homage. So I'm just going to run it and let's have a look at it. So I made kind of a cool logo, which I was quite proud of. Um, took a while to do all the pixel art for that. And I've got this sort of drone playing in the background, very uh, sort of Commodore 64 vibe. And ideally that border would animate, which it did in the original version, but I haven't got around to that yet. So let's play it. Okay. So what we've got is this sort of uh, craft, which you can press up to fly up. And as soon as you release the key, it falls down automatically. Not with gravity, it's a sort of controlled descent. Um, but that is what added to the sort of difficulty of the game. And it made the controls more interesting than, say, a platformer or something where you had free controls to fly up and down as you want. Um, so you can fly around and you can shoot, obviously. So we've got this little laser here. And this is destructible scenery over there which I can blast my way through. Um, you may have noticed that the eyeballs actually follow you around, which I thought was kind of quite cool. Um, ignore this hole in the floor. That's actually a, a test, uh, which I added to the map so I can drop through um, and land on this end pad, which is the end game. And that allowed me to sort of test the end game screen. And when it's done, actually, I want it to show the players the, the time you took to, to play so that we people can sort of speed run that. OK, so so the map at the moment is just a test map to allow me to test out the various enemies I've added to the game. So let's um, go and have a look at those. So if we head through here, we've got a couple of things. The, the um, We've got rockets there with these flashing red lights which sort of alert the player. And what they do is shoot at you as soon as you go in their path. So they're very fast and hard to avoid um, if you fly foolishly in front of them. So up here, we've got these enemies in the pipe and they're actually invincible. If I shoot them, they make a sort of uh, invincible noise. And the original game had these uh, Cybernoid and they were really quite hard to get through with a joystick on those old 8-bit machines. I'm trying to make this game a bit easier than the original, so it's more sort of fun to play. And so this is doable, so we can get in there and head through. Mustn't set this rocket off. Yeah, there we go. I mean, I might keep this screen in the final game. Um, and maybe this screen too, you know, as a sort of training screens. So the original game had a sort of turret thing that fired like this, but it was random bullets. And there were so many of them that it was very hard to get through them and the randomness made it feel unfair. But because it's a fixed interval now, I think it's m more fair for the player. It's still not easy and you've got to time things right. Okay, so there's a turret down the bottom here, which is invincible when closed and vulnerable when open. Oh, I, I want to try and take it out. Let's see if I can do that. Whilst avoiding those bullets. Bit of a challenge. But yeah, there we go. Okay, and up the top we've got enemy spawners. They are actually spawning things randomly, but it's not... It's not too difficult. I've tuned it so you can get in there. So let's get past these. OK, we've got some uh, tentacles here which don't harm the player. They're just sort of extra tough animated scenery. Um, right, I want to shoot these things through the gap. Make sure I need to shoot low enough. Make sure the bullets don't hit me. So here's another of those invincible enemies in a pipe. And to, I need to time this right through there. Okay, good. Horizontal rockets. Oh, pretty nasty. Oh, man. Uh, right, okay, I want to get down here. These are mines. I'm going to try and shoot shoot my way path through. I'm going to ignore that turret. And and that's kind of it for the, for the map at the moment. So I need to add more rooms, more variety, um, and make it fair on the player so that, you know, it increases in difficulty over time. So let's look at Pico 8 a bit more. I love this language. They call it a fantasy console. 
And it, what's cool about it is you can edit the code, um, you can edit your sprites. And I've had good fun making the sprites for this game. That's the shooting player, various explosions, uh, lots of wall tiles and things with this sort of pseudo, you know, shaded effect. Um, I actually got loads of different background uh, tiles here, which I'm not using. That's because these were experiments to try to get the look and feel right. So here you can see the one I settled on, but some of them were like too dark or too light or too contrasty or fiddly on the eye. I mean, I spent a lot of time coming up with these two uh, different background tiles and destructible tiles. Uh, also, we've got enemies. So we've got the various moving ones, um, their animations as well, like just a flashing light for the missile, the eight way eyeballs, mines and things like that, turrets at the end of this this tab here, you've only got four tabs for sprites, so there's not a lot of room. And two of the tabs are shared memory with the map just to complicate things. So there's the logo. Uh, this is actually the sprite for lives on the UI. If I run the game, you can see it up at the top there, lives. And this is the turret, which has three frames of animation. It was too big to fit on the other tabs. Um, there's also built-in sound effects uh, editor. So that's kind of cool. It's a bit like a program I used to use for game jams called BFXR. And there's also a, a tracker where you can put music for your game. So it's got everything you need kind of to, to make a whole game in itself. Oh, the map editor. Yep. You can zoom in and out and, and scroll around and you can see the map that, that I just played here. Um, and it sort of ends there, but I intend to sort of flesh out the map with more rooms and a few choices and stuff like that. Uh, what's sort of missing from the game at the moment is you've only got this pea shooter and I do want to add more power ups to the game. So uh, bombs that drop away from you, a spinning mace like the original game and, you know, bouncing bombs, a few other things. So I'll probably do another video uh, talking through the code of doing those. Um, looking at the code, there's a main tab here which uh, runs the game at 60 FPS and you can actually change the frame rate that Pico 8 runs, I believe. And I, ch I wanted 60 for that old school feel. Yes, I know it'd be 50 in the UK, 60 in North America. And this just handles really the main update loop and various screens. I've got a sort of common functions um, code tab here, which has got stuff that handles uh, looking at the map, like is this a square on the map solid or is this pixel solid, which is my sort of collision detection. It's reusable code I could use in another game. Uh, I've got a sprite class, which again is reusable. I've called it a class, but uh, Pico 8 uses Lua, which is a strange kind of language, which is all sort of based around lists and sort of objects you put into lists. Uh, lists working a bit like arrays, but with more flexibility and the objects you put in them, you can add various fields on them. So the, these sprites have got various fields set here and, and you can add more to some and less to others. It's like a sort of primitive object oriented inheritance kind of, I don't know, it's a strange language. It's hard to describe and it took a while to get used to, but um, I have enjoyed using it actually. And uh, I've got the player itself uh, and the various bullets and collision, a aliens, enemies, obviously, you know, um, it reads the enemy data in from the map and then uh, animates and moves them around and deals with the various behaviors. And we've got particle effects as well. And again, these could be reused if I put them in another game. And in fact, if you've played uh, my other sort of flip screen platformer game that's on itch.io right now called Where's My Computer Gone? Um, that uses a lot of similar code. There's a lot of code we use between these two engines. This one, I actually, I actually started first ages ago. I used this code for Where's My Computer Gone and shipped that. And then I've gone back to this and um, I've enhanced this further, actually. And I'll, I'll work on it sort of in my spare time occasionally when I feel like it. Perhaps I'll finish it this Christmas and get it out the door. Not sure. Anyway, um, that is Cyber Jam. Um, I'm quite pleased with it so far and stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.